You're already familiar with the SN1 reaction, in which a good leaving group just vibrates strongly enough that it leaves of its own accord, leaving behind a carbocation, which can be intercepted by a nucleophile, substituting where the original leaving group was. But substitution isn't the only possible fate of a carbocation. Remember, carbocations have empty p orbitals, which are stabilized by hyperconjugation from adjacent sigma bonding orbitals. While this hyperconjugation stabilizes the empty p orbital, it weakens the sigma bonds that are donating. This makes the corresponding sigma star orbitals slightly better acceptors than they would otherwise be. If these sigma bonds are CH bonds, that makes them susceptible to attack by bases. If a base donates into this sigma star CH, while the bond is in hyperconjugation with the adjacent P orbital, the sigma bond breaks and the sigma bonding electrons are already poised and ready to make a pi bond to the adjacent carbon by sharing with that empty p orbital that they're aligned with. The result is a new pi bond, an alkene. From a molecular orbital perspective, we might describe this as the base donating electrons initially into sigma star CH, but only when the corresponding sigma CH can simultaneously donate into the empty p orbital. We could call the sigma star CH the initial acceptor, and the empty p orbital of the carbocation the ultimate acceptor. And since the orbitals have to all align in a particular orientation for the reaction to happen, we draw all the arrows in one step, like this. Notice that I'm drawing the second arrow to the space between the alpha carbon and the carbocation. This is because the electrons end up between those two carbons in a pi bond. This reaction, called an elimination because you remove two groups from a molecule, the leaving group and a proton, is our first way to synthesize alkenes. Because it happens to the same intermediate, a carbocation, that's present in the SN1 reaction, this reaction is referred to as the E1 reaction for elimination unimolecular. It typically happens under the same sorts of conditions that favor SN1 reactions, tertiary leaving groups for instance, but the elimination can only occur when an adjacent CH bond hyperconjugates with the empty p orbital of the carbocation, and when a base is present which, for whatever reason, doesn't like to add directly into the empty p orbital. So what sorts of bases participate in the E1 elimination? Certainly not strong ones. It's not possible to generate carbocations under strongly basic conditions. So they must be weak bases. And they must be bases that don't prefer to add to the carbocation directly. The sigma star CH, that is the initial acceptor, is much more sterically accessible than the empty p orbital of a tertiary carbocation. So big, spread out, very weak bases tend to be the ones that participate in this reaction. Bases like HSO4 minus, which has charge spread out over several oxygen atoms. The final thing we need to think about is what if multiple different hydrogens are adjacent to the carbocation? Which one will be deprotonated? And where will the new alkene form? In principle, any of them could be deprotonated, but we tend to see a preference for the formation of the most substituted and therefore most stable alkene. Because this reaction tends to occur at a particular region of a molecule, that is, at the hydrogen that will produce a particular stable alkene, it's said to be regioselective. Similarly, since the E1 reaction tends to produce the most stable alkene, it also tends to produce trans or E alkenes.
because it favors one stereo isomer, it's said to be stereoselective. In practical terms, since the E1 and SN1 reactions are both possible fates of carbocations, the two reactions are often in competition. You may see the products of both substitution and elimination within the same reaction flask. However, there's one circumstance in which we just see elimination, and that's when we treat secondary or tertiary alcohols with concentrated sulfuric acid. Once the strong acid protonates the OH group and it leaves as water, HSO4- is left. It's rather bulky and very delocalized and only really performs elimination, not substitution.